my cereal fort. This isn't a whisper video. It's early Sunday morning. I don't know how early now. I've been up for a really long time. It's 7.30 a.m. I'm wearing Tom's comfy gray sweats again. Who the hell makes these? Because they are so comfortable. Uh, oh, let me ditch the... Yeah, peeps. Look at... all oh, These were all requested. All these cereals uh, were requested in the comments. We'll get to that in a second. I just saw these peeps because it reminded me of us because I always refer to you guys as peeps. So I got these... I'm not going to eat them. Come on. There's no way these are good. These are seasonal, right? Has anyone eaten peeps? I'm not, I'm not going to do it. Not going to do it, but maybe we could read the box a little bit. These are going over here. Duh. I didn't want them to go all the way off the bed, but whatever. Oh, important message. A very important message for Rotten Tomatoes. If something's wrong with your little Nikki page. For some reason, the scores are really really low those need to change to accurately reflect the awesomeness of that movie so if you guys could get on that asap that would be wonderful i went and i bought a controller over here in this area at uh target and so i'm going to be able to play some Isaac for you guys later. I know there was a couple of you that were asking for it. Got to get back into Isaac. I miss that game, actually. Dude, I remember waiting for... I, what was the most recent one? Repentance? What's the one? that? And it probably isn't. I forgot, but it was highly anticipated. Dude, I'm a million percenter on Isaac, and I've been meaning to make an Isaac video for months now, actually. Shout out Heresitical, if you're still around, man. Hopefully, you'll see the thumbnail when I do put out the video, because that was long overdue. I actually used your tips that you gave me um, last few times. I played it. I've just been so fucking busy. I haven't been able to get around to it. This was the only controller they had available, but it was kind of cool. It's called the Warriors Nirvana, and it's got the cher the Japanese cherry blossoms on there. I just wanted to see what this looks like. I'll do a little unboxing of this shit. Oh, you know what I didn't do? Is set my timer. Hold on. I gotta be really careful because roads pick up everything. That. Hey, that's pretty fucking cool, actually, I will say. Look at that guy. I dig it. Okay, Mig Mig's match. So, for those of you that don't remember, or if you weren't here, there was a video where I was just giving money for comments to people. And one of the people I gave money or a prize to was mig mig so rather than take me up on the twenty dollars a month to amazon mig mig countered with okay well how about i just donate to a uh, charity and then uh you match it or some i don't even know if mig mig asked me to match it maybe but either way that's what we're doing mig mig chose the make a wish america foundation and even retroactively paid for those months it must have been a couple of, i don't know why it says 78 75 is the amount that uh, mig mig donated i thought it was just 20 dollars. so even going back three months that would be 60 84 months i don't know what the math was on there and there is mine where i matched it after and i didn't realize the reason they look different i was like wait what why does mine look different if you actually notice mine went to make a wish international and mig migs was make a wish america i did not realize that i'll be honest with you i i saw mig migs donation come in while i was at work and so i was like oh shit and then i just like went to google and i just literally typed make a wish really quick and went to the first one and then i just it all it was very like rushed dude it doesn't matter i donated does that does the way you donate to something matter here let me ask you this if i am at ralph's 
and I, uh, grocery store for those that uh, aren't familiar. If I'm at Ralph's, oh fuck, I gotta set my timer, dude, and then I'll ask you this question. Uh, if I'm at Ralph's and say I've got some bags in my hands and I'm rushing out the door and there is some sort of a charity outside and I'm just in a fucking hurry and then I just reach into my pocket for $20 and I just go, I gotta go and I just toss it like on the table. What's the sentiment there? Am I a dick? Like will... Will you get a sarcastic thank you from the person? No, you won't. They'll be like, oh, thank you so much. That is kind of a dick move, though. I don't know if anyone should be that fast where they're just like, but I've done that. I'm a dick, aren't I? Oh, fuck. Dude, some people are in our... I'm not going to defend myself. I should stop and hand the money to people. Don't throw money at people. Of course, that's a dick move. This is why I have you people here. You're my therapists. Thank you. So that is Mig Mig's match. And that was very cool. So yeah, make a wish. Heard lots of good stuff. And now I get to go ahead and eat all these cereals. But what we're going to do before I get to the cereals is I want to talk about a comment someone left. And that was Native. Native, you still didn't email me if you want 20 bucks because you left the comment on the last trivia post in the uh, community section. Looks like I'm too late to get any of the trivia questions, but here's some trivia of my own. When Mr. Kellogg's originally created Corn Flakes, the first Kellogg's cereal, he originally wanted it to taste bland and marketed them as an anti-masturbation product. John Harvey Kellogg was, actually here, I'll just go through some of his wiki first, an American businessman, inventor, and physician who was an advocate of theological modernism and the progressive movement. Now, that is not what his wiki said like years ago when I was reading about the foundation of the Kellogg Cereal Company, okay? I'll continue who was an advocate of theological modernism, and I already said that he was the director of the Battle Creek Sanitarium in Battle Creek, Michigan, founded by members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. It combined aspects of a European spa, oh, how luxurious, a hydrotherapy institution, a hospital, and high-class hotel. They make a fucking sanitarium sound. Check me in. One for the sanitarium, please. Yes, do you have a corner room with a view, please? Sanitarium. I don't know oh, the guitars, although, you know what? I'll teach you how to play sanitarium uh, on another video. Kellogg A treated the rich and famous as well as the poor who could not afford other hospitals. According to Encyclopedia Britannica, his development of dry breakfast cereals was largely responsible for the creation of the flaked cereal industry. Popular misconceptions attribute blah 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 blah. Okay, I don't want to read that. I'm just gonna fucking stop. Alright, I wanted to finally get to um how they made the corn flakes. But the thing that I'm getting at is, like, there's a whole bunch of verbiage in here that in the Wikipedia article that just totally paves over or paints a different light than what I read about a couple of years ago. And in short, John Harvey Kellogg, along with his brother in this sanitarium, in an effort to create a bland food because they believed spicy and sugared foods made people want to bang each other or made you want to jerk off or both or something and they were very against that I believe again feel free to check my work hold on people are out for a morning walk can you hear them yeah I don't know maybe you can hear them maybe you can't and so they created these I believe breakfast squares kind of like a biscuit and then ended up making cornflakes as well without sugar, without anything uh, on it. They were they were popular, but they weren't gangbusters popular. The cornflakes without the sugar or the salt or anything like that. And then one day, this dude Post is it H W Post? 
What's po the guy from Post Serial? He comes by probably with a twirly mustache going, eh, ah, see? That's how I envision these fucking... Well, look at Harvey Kellogg in front of me. I don't know what Post looks like. I'm too lazy to fucking look it up. But Post, I believe, went to visit... Was it the sanitarium? Wherever they were making the fucking cornflakes. And uh, it was... John and his brother, I'm going to call him William, I'm going to pretend like I remember his name is William, hopefully it is, they were there, and Post comes by, and he's like, let me see your shit, let me see your process, and William or John, one of them said to the other one, don't show him, and then the other one's like, fuck it, I'm going to show him, it's for the good of humanity, we got to get people to stop jerking off, and then the other one's like, no, don't do it, shows him anyway, Post figures it out. He looks at all the stuff. He goes, cool, I'm going to go back and make this shit on my own. He does it, but then you know what fucking Post does? He adds sugar. Post added fucking, I think it was grape sugar, to his cornflakes. And it fucking destroyed everyone. Because obviously, because obviously, obviously, right? So, the one of the brothers... I think William gets really pissed at John because he's like, I told you we should have added sugar. Oh, by the way, that was uh, something I left out is he was trying to tell uh, John at one point that he should add sugar also to uh, compete with Post. And then um, John was like, no. And then I think William left, added sugar to his shit, and then Rift came between them. And that's all I remember. I don't know if I just regurgitated crazy, um, not true bullshit. I forgot what article I read it in, but it was very provocative. And I liked it a lot. So here I am recounting that to you. Let's move on. We're going to go into your fucking comments now. So I can eat some cereal. I'm excited about this. Oh, here we go. So the first thing is I left a... I put up a poll, David Whispers, cereal battle. Yes, I'll probably eat it next video. This is what's become of me. Also, it was beautiful out today. Misty Green Mountains, that's true. It was like a dream. Anyway, night, night, talk in the comments. So, the contenders, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, Lucky Charms, Captain Crunch, and a different, devilishly delightful fourth meal. Comment below. So, Cinnamon Toast Crunch destroyed the competition 55% they got over 50% then Lucky Charms at 11% Captain Crunch 22% and Eric Santos I pinned the comment because yeah I respect any cereal that gives a good post milk drink definitely a good response and all of these do and Deaky Dude says I'm a Fruity Pebbles fan but even bigger fan of what my friends call grandpa cereals like kicks and cornflakes you know what i do have some special k right over there and this is it's funny i'm just gonna open that but the reason why is i'm gonna hop down to pepperoni tony's comment pepperoni tony actually said rice krispies hands down never gets old good with or without milk the fat ass in me says chocolate special k so i actually did get the, the chocolate special K for you, Tony. And I'm actually going to have some of this right now. Hey, is it, should I do ASMR? I never do tapping and stuff. I haven't, no, I'm not going to, I'm just going to open this shit. Because I just want to, I want to try the different flav flavors. So, I got to be away from the mic though, because the road picks it up. This is good. I'm happy now. Also, though, I don't need that much of this one because you you guys can see all the other cereals here. Let's be real. Okay. Hey, those chocolate flakes are fucking good. Okay. Oh, warning, crunching. Let's see what else we got. A lot of people into Captain Crunch. A lot of people in the comments into Captain Crunch. Even though Cin... Well, yeah, it's because... Fuck, that's good. It's because Cinnamon Toast Crunch dominated in the actual numbers. So, that's when people had to come out in the comments and represent. Grady McIntyre, personally, I have a Mount Rushmore of cereals that go Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Uh... 
and then uh, crave basically cookie with chocolate or vanilla inside it can also come chocolate then captain crunch then rice krispies because of the possibilities yeah dude very familiar with crave i actually ate crave on the 4k foods channel it is a very very good it's a tasty fucking cereal way too much it's sugar in sugar come on it's chocolate pockets chocolate pockets that's what it should be called chocolate pocket cereal mini and you just shove them in your fucking mouth and you eat chocolate pockets for breakfast dude let's call it what it is almost got them i didn't though dr nafari says don't know if america's got these but nestle's nest quick i can't get enough after you're done with the little heavenly chocolate balls the leftover chocolate milk hits so hard i got some um cocoa puffs over there i'm going to open those up in a little bit the cinnamon toast crunch is next level cereal this is adam i like to snack on frosted mini wheats a few snack ideas could be barbecue ribs hot wings spaghetti toast or maybe even sloppy joe i responded to this one saying toasted sourdough with almond butter is on my radar maybe with honey if i'm feeling sweet that is true that used to be one of my uh, go-to's you know what that's enough fucking people that have brought up cinnamon toast crunch i think it's time to eat some goddamn cinnamon toast crunch what do you guys think i think it's time and by the way who brought up the fucking golden grams a couple of you oh luigi and someone else brought in golden grams i didn't get golden grams because look cinnamon toast crunch and golden grams they both have the same like flat shape i wouldn't be surprised if they didn't come from the same kind of um uh factory equipment the same manufacturing process the same gear maybe maybe not i don't know i'll look into it when that camera goes off i'm gonna take all of these and i'm gonna go to the kitchen and things are gonna get fucking dirty i'm gonna take out my milks plural milks nut milks i don't you know i do almond milk but all of the I'm pretending like I'm being like all demure or something and I'm like oh I can only eat a handful of each of these yeah, bullshit dude I can empty each one of these boxes into my giant stupid bowl and shovel the shit into my mouth all day long while I play video games so and you can too and you know you do in fact I took like two handfuls because CPC, dude. Cinnamon Toast Crunch is awesome. Sorry. Okay. Then what else? Oh. My back hurts. Do I have a, do I have a pillow? Actually, put this in my mouth and then I'm going to sit on this. That's what she said. That's better. The combination of being able to stretch and the cinnamon toast crunch in my mouth. This is fucking heavenly. We'll see what other things we can open. Someone get to Lucky Charms. I need these fucking custom Lucky Charms over here. Sorry, let me go back in order. And I'm uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Edwin uh, David Holcomb says, I would love to say a sausage McGriddle with tartar sauce and slivered onions as that is my all-time devilishly delightful fourth meal, but not being a cereal disqualifies it. With cereal, I can pretty much roll the dice and love whatever it is, except that boring-ass shit with the raisins in it. Dude, come on. I love Raisin, uh, raisin Bran Crunch. Raisin Bran and Raisin Bran Crunch are so fucking good. Captain Crunch just hits different. God damn, it's like drugs light, and that's right. I responded, I think, on this one saying it's like Captain Crack. And you know what? I would say that means we get to open up the Captain Crunch. That was the first mention of Captain Crunch. I love this goddamn cereal so much. With the Crunch Berries. Hey, can we all agree that when we say Captain Crunch, it's Captain Crunch with Crunch Berries? I don't even know why. This just says Crunch Berries. And it's not oops all berries. Do any of you psychos just get Captain Crunch without Crunch Berries? If so, I need you to unsub immediately and go. Thank you. Crunchitize me, Captain. Oh my god, the sweetness on that. Now, we're gonna. We're going to have a little talk again 
with Pepperoni Tony, okay? Pepperoni Tony decided to leave a comment under my top comment where I said, I'm just going to say there are no losers here. Fire away. Pepperoni Tony decides to tell me people eating Lucky Charms are losing. Buying a box is a lottery of how many marshmallows you'll something with the terrible cereal. So you mess up your sentence. And you know what? I'm, yeah, I'm calling you out on it because you offended me. I actually replied with, how dare you? No heart for you. It's a delicious gamble. Tony, deal with it. And so I did get that box of Lucky Charms that you see right over here. Right? But what I did is I went and I got a box of Lucky Charms with marshmallow clusters because they make such a thing for naysayers like you that are upset with the marshmallow ratio. And so I'm not even going to mess with the regular Lucky Charms today. I don't care. I'm going to open up this box of Lucky Charms with marshmallow clusters where there isn't even such a thing as the non-marshmallow part of Lucky Charms. It's all marshmallows, Tony. Do you understand? This is the level we play at now. This is going right in the bowl. That camera goes off. This goes right in the bowl. I lied. I'm 100% opening the original Lucky Charms because I actually missed that. That, uh, what is it, corn? Whole grain oats. <gasps> Never mind. You know what? I think I'm switching unless the and Cinnamon Toast Crunch is going to be made from wheat, right? Unless Cinnamon Toast Crunch is made from oats, is made from wheat, sugar. Guys, I'm sorry. This is a weird thing for me to say, but I just realized Lucky Charms is my favorite cereal. Original, not the marshmallow one. Original Lucky Charms is my favorite. It's made from oats. I didn't know that. Okay. Today I learned... All Dressed is a chip flavor immensely popular in Canada since the 1970s. This flavor combines ketchup, barbecue, sour cream and onion, and salt and vinegar flavors all rolled into one chip. Russell Ruffles has recently been marketing the flavor in the U.S. Never heard of that. That was Bluest Waters submitted that. 6.1 thousand upvotes. And Jurassic... I don't know, it's too far. Let me see, can I make it bigger? I don't want to make it bigger. I'll have to mess with it in post. Uh, Jurassic, Jurassic something says, so we drove down to Buffalo to see the Leafs play. And I mean, yeah, sure, gas is cheap, but they don't even have all the dressed chips in that shithole. I don't know what that's from. That's some sort of a line. Oh, sounds like it's from Trailer Park Boys. All right, let's move on. Ask Reddit. Hold on, I gotta turn off night mode. Turn off dark mode. Ironically, turning off dark mode gives me my Reddit night mode back. Okay. Ask Reddit says, You are dead. How can you make your funeral as unpleasant and embarrassing as possible for everyone else through your will? This one was fucking awesome. The first one is the best. Oh, by the way, this one is submitted by uh, Tijim Wheel. Okay, I will. I'll, I'll make it bigger. Hold on. That's what she said. There's a lot of them in this one. Okay. Tijam Will says, at 15.3 thousand upvotes, by the way, you are dead. How can you make your funeral as unpleasant and embarrassing as possible for everyone else through your will? First comment by Blind Malone. Roll me down a hill in a giant hamster ball through a hilly obstacle course. There will be a series of holes dug at the bottom of the hill. My family will bet on which hole I land in. The winners split the inheritance. I am buried in the same hole I landed in. Edit. Yes, I've had this idea in my head for years and years. I like the mental image of my lifeless body slamming around the hamster ball. And, uh, Spaceman Piff, sorry, Spaceman Spiff, uh, 1307 says, this is funny, imagining, like, a giant Plinko game. Uh, Bluey is a girl, says, instead of in a casket at the front of the church, place my dead body in and amongst the funeral attendees. Right. 
uncultured swine says, I'll record a video, so let me guide your attention to the pot in the middle of the room. Yes, that one. Whoever shits in it first gets my fortune. What? I don't know if you guys can hear that motorcycle or whatever it is, so it's time for me to eat Lucky Charms. Oh my god, it's good. It's just an incredible cereal. Guys, I really like Lucky Charms. Mm. How bad are you for me? 140 calories. Dude, this whole box is only... There's no fucking way. This whole box dry is only like 1,200 calories. Dude, let's get on it. This is nothing. This is fucking child's play. Will that vehicle shut the fuck up? What is that, a swarm of bees? It's the slowest plane on Earth. Dude, how is a plane going slower than a fucking car? How do you stay in the sky? Hurry the fuck up. Alright, plane left. Let's go. Where were we? Uh, Illumijani? Illumijani? says, I get cremated. At the reception afterwards, we play a pre-recorded message of me where I say at the end, I want to be a part of all of you. So I had my children bake my ashes into the cookies you're all eating. Hmm. Okay. Do I want more Lucky Charms? Or I don't, do I want, dude, I, I think I have sugar in my stomach. I don't think I feel good. I think I want an omelet. But that's not going to stop me from eating more Lucky Charms. I'll put it down. I'll put it down. I'll put it down, okay? I'm good. Rip hitter. Fake bottom casket. Unlocked after put in place for the wake. That way, when they go to move it to the graveyard, I fall out of the bottom. <sighs> Cough and flop. Trailer Park Prepper says, Have a rabbi, a priest, and a televangelist officiate. Most of the people that would even bother to be at my funeral are Baptist. Okay. One more and we'll move on. Joe Morg says, Everyone at my funeral gets a taser. At some random point during the ceremony, a buzzer will sound. When the buzzer sounds, the last person standing gets everything in my will. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Let's move on. This one. Oh, this one made me laugh. What do you hate in porn? This one is very, very funny to me. First one, I saw an amateur video recently where the guy's smoke alarm kept beeping because it needed to be changed. Actually, that is very funny. I'm going to upvote that one. Uh, next one, I need a new account, man. I was perusing the old hub once, just clicking on random videos, but one caught my eye. I once saw a dude dressed up as SpongeBob get a BJ from a chick dressed as Sandy and the line... I'm a sponge. I'm full of air. So if you keep sucking on me, you'll be able to breathe. Made me laugh so hard that I wasn't hard anymore and went and played World of Warcraft instead. Upvote. Suck me if you want to breathe. That should be, you know what that is. That's, come on, Schwarzenegger. Bread 93096 says, The sterile overlit sets bother me. It's like they're fucking in a bed, bath, and beyond showroom. Okay. Acceptable stay. Man touches woman's leg. Woman, oh my god, I'm coming. Yeah, there are... The overacting. I wonder. Yeah, the overacting is, is a bit much. King of all blacks. Pulling out and jacking it for five minutes. Gotta say, five minutes is excessive. At five minutes, you're wondering if maybe they mistitled the thumbnail. Okay, yeah. Five minutes? How long is that clip? 
we talking full video, full movie, or are we talking clip? If you're talking about a dude's jacking it for five minutes out of a seven-minute clip, there's a good chance they uh, miscategorized uh, that thumbnail if it's in the, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, uh, aggravating salt says the overdramatic acting. Yeah, overdramatic acting also. Antiki Hera says, back in the early 2000s, when you had to find such things on Kazaa, I remember finding one called Two Arab Girls Declare Jihad on a Jewish Cock, and I burst out laughing so hard. Every now and then, I'll be doing mundane tasks like grocery shopping or mowing my lawn. Think about it and giggle to myself. The few years post 9-11 sure were a weird time. That's fucking hilarious. And... Okay. I could stay in this forever, but let's move on. What's the last one that I put? Oh, yeah, dude. I wanted to actually put this one. Do I want to leave on that one? No. Actually, I want to show what a couple of things that Tom made first. So I'm, I'm here at my place. And usually on the weekends and just throughout the week, I'll go over and hang out with Tom at the other place. But they're fucking sick right now. So I'm not going over there. And this fucking guy keeps on IMing me like, Hey, you'll probably get really sick if you come over, but um, I made potatoes. And then he sends me these fucking things, so I'm like, uh, drop them off, come out here, drop them off. I was kidding, obviously, but he's like, no, I'm not going to do that. But it's like, if you know I can't come out there, don't post shit like this. And then he fucking, not only this, this was before they went in the oven. These were potatoes, um, mushrooms, onions, carrots. It looks like there's minced garlic with the rosemary. And, you know... Riptide. Now, you should know how to handle a riptide. Now, I did want to say this shit. And this, I doubly wanted to say this shit because some of my favorite people on the planet might be taking a, a trip soon, whether it be to Disney World or Japan or Vegas or the Bahamas or if you end up, say, in South Beach, Miami, where I was once upon a time. You might get caught in a fucking riptide and be terrified for your life and actually only escape it because God is looking out for you and there's no other fucking reason. Let me explain what happened to me. Now, being an L.A. guy, when I went to South Beach, I was enamored with the turquoise water. A lot of you from this channel are actually from the L.A. area. Actually... Or you're a transplant, but you've never seen the Atlantic water. You've only seen the Pacific water. Now, I can't speak for the northern Atlantic water. I've only been around Florida. But when I got there, I was like, oh my God, this is what water should be. I got to the beach. It's turquoise and clear so I could see the bottom. Also, I walked into the water. There was no transition in temperature virtually between the outside and the water. It was like bath water. Amazing. As such, I immediately went back to the nearest surf shop and bought, I don't think I got flippers, maybe aqua socks, but I got myself some fucking goggles and I went out and I started uh, swimming. I love South Beach so much. I hate it too, but I love it too. And long story short, I swam out so far and started just swimming along and I got caught in a riptide. Now, what's a riptide? I don't know scientifically and I would look it up on Wikipedia, but I have Captain Crunch in my hands. What do you want me to do? So I'm just going to kind of explain my experience of a riptide. Say you've, you're done with your time in the water and you want to go back to shore to hang out with your friends, eat a sandwich, smoke something, pass out on the sand, what have you. So you're like, let's go back. All of a sudden, the ocean sucks you back out into, well, the ocean. It doesn't let you get back to shore, dude. That's a nightmare. I was in that shit. That's what a riptide is to me. That's what a riptide feels like. You want to get back to shore, and this is what you do. You go as hard as you can, dude. You're like, this isn't what to do. This is what you'll do instinctually, which is the point of me bringing up this Reddit article for you. I want to leave it on this note. You Instinctively, unless you actually know this, this one simple trick, 
you try to go toward the shore and you're like this as hard as you can you'll go a little bit and then the riptide goes and it fucking takes you out back here so you wind up going like and you slowly fucking exhaust yourself till you're in the middle of the ocean and you have to escape a sea full of sharks just like Clint Eastwood did when that plane went down you can't let that happen no what you need to do instead of going perpendicular to the shore here's the shore here's you out here perpendicular means 90 degrees too instead of trying to swim to the shore like I did like an asshole you want to swim parallel to the shore and I imagine at an angle oh getting a bunch of text messages at 9 a.m. on a Sunday what fucking psychopath does that and oh my god Jesus sorry I forgot no more of that and parallel or slight angle, I guess, until the riptide is done. Someone else may want to weigh in on that, but I'll go ahead and just read what this Reddit article says, posted by Irons80. You should know how to handle a riptide. Why you should know. It could save your life and others some ways to spot one murky or debris in water, sandy water that goes far out to sea, choppy water movement, less breaking waves, rip current, that's, what the fuck are you saying, it's not many upvotes, and I thought this would, mur that's, dude, th this first sentence sucks, just so you know, thank you for your contribution, but why you should know, it could save your life, that's fine, but murky, what are you saying in this, murky or debris in water, sandy water that goes out far as, I don't know what the fuck you're saying, Okay, rip currents can be 10 to 150 feet wide. They usually slow down as they move offshore. Don't fight the current. Swim parallel to the shore until you're away from the current. Then swim diagonal toward the shore. Yeah, yeah, so that's it. Wanted to leave it on that. Okay, we're good. I was going to play some Isaac, but I have to... I actually know who this is. This is actually a family member in Vegas getting a hold of me. So, I have to see what's going on. I might actually go out there. I might go out to Vegas next week. Oh, Jesus, she's calling right now. All right, this might be an emergency. I gotta go. I love you guys. Uh, we'll do this more often. This should be an easy one to edit. We will talk soon. Talk in the comments.